Good day for everybody and welcome to all the persons who are now connected that will be connected later and to our speakers in this second alumni online seminar. My name is Maria Laura Sorrentino. I work at IHE as Alumni Relations Advisor and it's my pleasure to be with you today and to develop this topic of the day that is water, pardon, Global Water Education Network when update and a way forward. This is an initiative that has been started more than one year ago by IHE Delft, by UNESCO, by CABNET and by CIWI. And it was presented in the World Water Forum. So I find it that it was a good idea to present it to all alumni and persons that are interesting because it's a very good initiative that can be very interesting to all. The speakers that we are going to have today are three, and they are from the organizations who are, who are leading this initiative. I would like to introduce Rama Elfitri, that is uh, Ms. Rama Elfitri, that is Chief of Section for Capacity Development and Water Family Coordination in UNESCO Division of Water Science. Uh, Dr. Tembagumbo, director of CABNET, that is also Aichi Delph alumnus, and Gaetano Gasal Casale, that is my colleague and manager of the liaison officer in at IHE. Without further ado, due to we have three speakers, I will not introduce the topic, but I will give the floor to them. But before, I would like to remind you that we are going to have the presentation. And after that will come the moment for questions. We would like to receive the questions written in the chat. So please use the chat to introduce yourself, to say where do you work and in which uh, country are you living now. And the question will be picked from there. You can write it uh, along the time that we have the session and it will be uh, read it loud and answer at the end of this of this event. Without uh, more words, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Gaetano Casale. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria Laura, uh, for organizing this event. I uh, would like to warmly welcome everyone attending, uh, colleagues from the alumni community uh, here. I'm also an alumnus, by the way, like Temba. So I think we are uh, together in this uh, in this very nice family around the table discussing uh, what we consider a very important initiative. And uh, I I have the honor to take the floor on behalf of the uh, of the partners here. Uh, but I'm not the only one going to, of course, uh, speak here. So I'm uh, what I'm going to do is uh, to present the Global Water Education Network, giving you some background and a little bit of details through uh, with the help of a PowerPoint presentation and then uh, give the floor to my colleagues Temba and Delfitri for, uh, for them to share their own perspective uh, and remarks on the uh, on the Gwen. Uh, first of all, um, uh, a little bit of background. Uh, as you all know, uh, last year in uh, in March, we had for the first time after a long time, uh, to be precise, 47 years, uh, a UN Water Conference in 2023 March, uh, and there were some uh, conclusion from the at a very high level, in particular from the President of the General Assembly. Uh, one of the main conclusion was that uh, it needed uh, as water family um, a global water education network to support the capacity of people and institutions, especially for developing countries to, uh, uh, to achieve the SDG 6. Uh, so in that moment, uh, uh, we took up the ambitious task uh, to uh, establish this Global Water Education Network, or in short, GWEN, as we call it, as a game changer for the SDG 6 Global Acceleration Framework. For those of, our, of you that are not too familiar with the Global Acceleration Framework, this is a framework within the UN Water family uh, that was politically endorsed in order to uh, accelerate the achievement of SDG 6, because as you might not know, we are not on track on achieving SDG 6, and we really need to accelerate. Within this framework, five accelerators 
measures were identified. Uh, they're indicated on the right side in the picture on the right side of this uh, um, of this slide. Uh, the financing, data and information, innovation, governance, and capacity development. So Gwen uh, fits very well uh, the uh, the the idea to boost the the this uh, specific accelerator. Um, what are the timelines that we have in mind for, for this important initiative? Uh, Gwen, uh, as I said, was identified as, as a game changer uh, within the uh, UN Water Conference uh, process. Uh, immediately after that, uh, both UNESCO and the what we call the Alliance of IHC Delft, uh, CapNet and CIWI, uh, we took up the, uh, this challenge to discuss uh, a strategy on how to uh, actually implement this global water acceleration framework. Uh, in fact, we even submitted one of the uh, voluntary commitments within the water action agenda, uh, which constitutes one of the main outcomes of the water conference, uh, and one of the few that are related to capacity development, I, uh, I would like to say. Uh, this alliance uh, started working on, on a concept about a global water education network and in August last year, more or less exactly one year uh, ago, we launched the idea of the GWEN during Stockholm Water Week and we also uh, um, gathered uh, and um, a key number of stakeholders and we um, asked for uh, inputs and feedback. We took upon ourselves uh, the, these inputs and uh, critical remarks from these key stakeholders, and we developed uh, a fully fledged concept and uh, uh, and delivery model uh, that is now being uh, finalized. And, and we are again going to uh, disseminate. We are in the process of disseminating the Gwen uh, concept um and also this uh, delivery model to uh, our constituency and we are going to have again another a second uh, follow up uh, meeting with key stakeholders during the upcoming Stockholm Water Week in August 2024 so this is about a little bit the background and the history. Um, uh, I wanted to also uh, with the slide that I have in front of me right now uh, and that you can see on screen, hopefully it, we also want to mention that um, we realize there are a lot of initiatives going on uh, in, uh, in support of the global acceleration framework. In fact, this GWEN, uh, we intend not to see this GWEN as a silo initiative, but an initiative that complements other initiatives that are uh, being undertaken, especially in support of the Capacity Development Accelerator. Uh, what I want to share with, the, with this community is that capacity, it's, it's a unique moment for capacity development and, uh, and water education, because through the Global Acceleration Framework, uh, at a very high political level, the water sector is uh, realizing the, the importance of capacity development as a, as a game changer, uh, and therefore, uh, a number of initiatives are being uh, created to help uh, advance the agenda of capacity development, among which I would like to mention, first of all, the Capacity Development Initiative. This is an initiative uh, that uh, is coordinated by UNESCO and UNDESA. Uh, and uh, the GWEN intends to provide uh, within the network also a strong support to this capacity development initiative. The capacity development initiative is especially targeted to support member states in achieving SDG 6 uh, within uh, their own countries. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in the last World Water Forum, uh, we, uh, we signed up for what we call a Bali coalition. If Fitri might uh, be, be saying uh, something more about this, it's, uh, it's a coalition of many different uh, capacity development actors that intend to work together to jointly advance the agenda on capacity development. And in addition to that, uh, the UNITAR, the agency in charge within the UN of training and education, they are also launching and advancing with uh, what they uh, what it's called a Global Water Academy. Uh, so, uh, in essence, uh, what we mean to say is that we uh, there is a concerted effort by a number of partners and uh, organizations and networks to. Uh, really strongly advance the, the overall agenda of water sector capacity development. 
and uh, I think that all these actors are well positioned within the, uh, the UN Water Family Network to uh, make a difference in order to achieve the SDG 6. Now, what, a little bit of the why we need a global water education network. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't have to explain to this kind of audience that we are really confronted with an increasing amount of water challenges around the globe. So we call them, of course, global water challenges. Uh, and um, as I said, there is uh, more and more and a stronger and stronger understanding that capacity development can really be a, uh, a game changer, uh, like a strong driver to help address these global water challenges. And one of the key issues here is that um, uh, with the, uh, the, 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 the change in the new generation of uh, uh, labor professionals, uh, as it shows uh, in, in the picture on the uh, bottom left side of this slide, there is a lot of baby boomers that are retiring. So we have a lot of new generation of uh, overall professionals and in particular water sector professionals that are coming to the front uh, and they are uh, of course confronted to uh, to manage uh, uh, this uh, increasing number of water challenges so building the capacity of this professional and of course next to that of their respective institution is going to become more and more important for the future now, um, this is all background information. Now, what is uh, really the Gwen here? Um, um, in a few minutes, uh, I would like to explain uh, in one sentence, as you see on the slide, this is a network that will deliver on a common global ag agenda to accelerate capacity development for the water sector, and especially in low and middle income countries. Um, one thing that I would like to uh, already mentioned up front is that this is not uh, in our intention a completely new network. The intention of this global water education network is take up uh, the existing efforts from uh, a plethora of existing number of, uh, for example, regional networks or uh, other water networks and put all these critical mass together in order to have a concerted uh, action towards addressing uh, the, the, the capacity development uh, emerging topics for the future. Uh, the, we have uh, designed the GWEN under three, uh, what we call three uh, pillars. Uh, one of them being capacity development programs. Uh, the second one being the capacity development products or services and uh, the capacity development laboratories in uh, uh, higher details. Capacity development programs are really the, the core uh, of the, uh, of the uh, activities of the network. We intend with uh, our capacity development uh, programs to support uh, water sector organization, in particular national governments, but also other key water sector organization to uh, address education and capacity gaps through uh, activities that, that are jointly designed with this water sector organization. Uh, in particular, this specific uh, pillar of the GWEN is going to, uh, to be uh, very closely working with the capacity development initiative that I mentioned uh, before, managed by UNESCO and UNDESA. The second pillar is the capacity development products. These are uh, uh, co-curated and co-developed um, product services and the instruments to uh, allow WEN members to uh, jointly deliver the capacity development services of pillar one. So uh, examples of this can be, for example, uh, curricula uh, of water education uh, in water education institution, uh, but in general, all, uh, all education related content that, uh, uh, that use best practices within the, uh, the network to support the capacity development programs. And uh, last but not least, what we want to do is uh, the so-called laboratories. So a little bit of experimentation on capacity development. Uh, very often capacity development learning happens at the individual institutes and stays within inst individual institutes. What we want to do here is uh, sharing uh, uh, this learning and make it like a collective learning so that we can have uh, uh, really a shared effort and understanding what are the new uh, emerging trends in capacity development. 
the uh, what you see in this uh, in this picture what you see in the background that it's a little bit uh, a bit fuzzy there is a, a, a more detailed explanation of the three pillars you see in the top part the capacity development programs and you see in the bottom part both the products and the, the laboratories or what we call the enhancing the value of learning um, we don't have time in a webinar like this to enter uh, the detailed discussion uh, about all the different elements that you see uh, not very clearly in the background. Uh, but the reason why I'm uh, why I'm showing this um, these specific slides and what we consider as a really game changer of the Gwen is the interaction among these different elements. Because of course, uh, we know that there are many organizations, including IG, CapNet, and many others, that are uh, uh, continuously developing capacity development programs within countries or within uh, water sector organization. Uh, there are joint uh, learning programs uh, uh, or joint masters, for example, that develop jointly capacity uh, development products. Uh, and of course, there are events like the, the Capacity Development Symposium that IHE Delft uh, uh, regularly hosts at IHE Delft. But what we think we lack is actually the interaction among all these different elements. And that's the gap we would like to fill uh, within this GWEN to make capacity development a real uh, global effort where all organizations that deal with the topic find a common space uh, for uh, for discussion and uh, um, i'd like to um, thank you for your attention this is uh, in in a nutshell what the when is um, of course the story is not all here because we have other organizations uh, at the table uh, that i would like to uh, to uh, now give the floor to in order to provide their own uh, remarks and of course uh, needless to say we can share uh, all, to whoever want to uh, receive more information of course we are very open and we can share uh, the the leaflet and the information with you at any time i'd like now to give the floor uh, maria laura if you allow me to or uh, i can give the floor to uh, now, Tem my colleague Temba uh, from CapNet, one of our partners in crime, and I would like to ask Temba to share your remarks about when. Floor is yours. Thank you, Gaetano. Um, fellow alumni, dear participants, um, it's a, a pleasure and honor for me to um, talk to you today. As Gaetano mentioned, also, I'm a uh, alumni from IHE Delft, so I feel at home. And uh, you can see also from the charts here that we are quite a close-knit uh, family. Um, and uh, thank you, Gaetano, for giving an overview of the um, of, of Gwen uh, and also the stage at which we are now, which is the Global Water Education Network. Um, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, make a few two remarks. In fact, the first remark is related to maybe emphasizing a couple of uh, attributes uh, of Gwen, how we see it and how maybe we intend to uh, implement it and go about it. Uh, and lastly, I would like maybe to just comment a bit about the role of the alumni, which I think is uh, very important in, in, in this uh, um, initiative. Um, one of the attributes of, of Gwen is that we want to really work on a collective identification of gaps. So, um, uh, uh, which is very important um, um, in, in the sense that, you know, we want to very much encourage, you know, collaboration with partners from the North to the South and also from the South to the South. The other attribute also which we want to emphasize is that with Gwen, we are looking at a long-term outlook because we believe that, you know, only short interventions, short courses will not cut it. So we are looking at a long-term outlook, holding by the hand and trying to ensure that, you know, water knowledge is well embedded in individuals and also in organizations in which we work in. So, which means that, you know, we have to really explore uh, uh, that 
the, the issue of demand driven. So the demand driven uh, um, uh, uh, will be a, a key aspect in implementing Gwen. And also co curating products um, and services is one of the attributes and uh, measuring impact, upscaling, and also learning because we want to learn um, also in the in the same process. But lastly, also to just emphasize is what Gaetano also mentioned, is that we want to contribute to a global discussion on water education. We want to be the front runners and want to define and also, you know, investigate a little bit better what water education and capacity development means. So we become a kind of a go-to um, uh, organization or a go-to network in this case. The way I see the role of the alumni, is, of course, it's huge because I see the alumni either acting as the nucleus in countries, in river basins or in aquifer setups or within organizations to trigger and also maybe shape some of the activities that we would like to embark on. And in a way, the alumni, IHE alumni, I see them as being on the ground, hands, feet, eyes, ears, and nose. And to be able to understand and also to contextualize uh, in such a way that all interventions are tailored and they speak to situations which are uh, on the ground. Uh, it is also an important, I think, uh, with this initiative, uh, which will be on offer, of course, to the alumni as part of the continuous learning, which we all look towards to, lifelong learning, uh, because we never stop learning. So it is important that when we pitch this, also we understand there's an alumni out there and they are, uh, uh, you know, we have been involved and also they are always ready to learn new things like myself. Um, this is what I wanted to say in a few minutes. And uh, I would like to, you know, congratulate also, you know, IHE Delft and Maria for putting this together and uh, uh, sharing with colleagues. Uh, you can see from, from the chat, you know, um, yeah, uh, uh, and also having an opportunity to meet and, and share on this important subject uh, on capacity development and water education. So I'll stop here for now and um, pass back the button to Gaetano. Thank you. Thank you very much, Temba, for your remarks. All well, uh, all very important and uh, Thank you for complimenting my message, especially on the alumni part. Uh, as uh, you should be aware that uh, we have been discussing the role of alumni, of course, within the framework of uh, of the GWEN, and uh, we will try to stay connected as much as possible uh, along the lines uh, that Temba mentioned. And now, would like I would like to now give the floor to uh, one other important partner, that's that's UNESCO, represented here by Elfitri Rahma. Thanks, Elfitri, for joining us. Uh, I give you the floor for your, your own remarks about Gwen. floor is yours. Okay. Thanks, uh, Gaetano. Yeah, uh, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet all of you. Uh, and especially most of you, I heard that all of you are the alumni of uh, ICE Delft, including Gaetano and also Hemba. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not the alumni, but I've been joining some courses offered by ICE Delft a long time ago, <laughs> at least. I will not check. Not sure whether it is considered as alumni or not. <laughs> I will check. Otherwise, we will invite you for another course. Yeah. Okay. So now in my role in UNESCO, as um, Gaetano mentioned, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm L, uh, uh, I'm Elfitri. I'm currently uh, chief of section for capacity development and water family coordination in UNESCO. So under my role, uh, I coordinated uh, capacity development related uh, activities or initiative related to water in UNESCO. And um, as also uh, Getano mentioned, uh, that Gwen uh, is um, uh, also 
align with the effort of UN Water SDG 6 uh, Capacity Development Initiative. So maybe I will uh, explain a little bit about the UN Water SDG 6 uh, Capacity Development Initiative, or in short form, we call it a CDI. So the, the UN Water uh, CDI was um, launched or established since 2021 in response to the SDG 6 uh, Global Acceleration Framework that uh, Gitano mentioned, which one of the acceleration framework is uh, capacity development. So this uh, CDI was uh, established to support uh, countries or member states uh, in order to achieve the SDG 6 um, um, implementation. Um, and the, the support, uh, the, the member state need to request uh, support uh, through uh, to us, uh, to uh, UNESCO and UNDESA currently is co-coordinator of this initiative. So then member state need to request specific uh, support to, um, to UNESCO or UNDESA. And then we will provide our support uh, to member state as, you, as one entity, uh, which is as, as, as UN, uh, as one uh, UN approach because uh, currently, this initiative uh, has uh, around 39 members um, in the initiative, um, which uh, include uh, mostly UN members and also partners. So we will provide support to the member state as the whole uh, UN uh, uh, entity. Um, so that is the main uh, objective of this uh, UN Water CDI. Um, so then uh, we... Uh, the, the initiative such as GWEN, Global Water Education Network, will be um, um, supporting uh, or um, uh, to, we will be together in uh, providing support to member states uh, where, where the uh, UN Water CDI will be supporting the, the, firm, uh, the, the main capacity development areas, where for, CDI, uh, for GWEN, we will uh, support member states through uh, conducting various activities in the specific uh, countries or areas, including also specific trainings uh, so, uh, to support individual or also uh, institutional uh, framework. So currently we have, uh, for the CDI, we have uh, four um, uh, pilot countries, which is uh, Panama, Costa Rica, uh, Cuba, and also Gambia. There will be um, some more um, uh, pilot countries maybe uh, expecting in the future, but at least now we are working on these four pilot countries. And the upcoming activities we will organize soon, uh, the, uh, I, I can say the first uh, or kick off, um, the integrated uh, workshop in Costa Rica that we will organize in September uh, later. So with the participation of uh, alumni to this uh, GWEN, uh, hopefully uh, will be also as a additional support uh, in um, implementing uh, water education uh, in various countries or also in the specific areas of water, okay, not only water and sanitation, but also can be other uh, aspect of water or nature based solution, uh, groundwater, and or any other topic. So yeah, that's that's, uh, that's all. So welcome for if there is any suggestion or question, uh, we will be happy to support. Thank you, thank you very much, Elfitri, for the uh, for the additional explanation about the CDI and the uh, how how it works. I think it's important to mention uh, the uh, in fact what is the scope of the CDI and uh, and with that also highlight the uh, that we are not uh, talking about two overlapping but very highly complementary initiatives, uh, and that's I think the value of this overall effort. Um, if um, I am allowed by my host, Maria Laura, I can uh, now uh, open the floor for questions. I already seen a uh, few uh, in, in the chat that I'm going to pick up. Um, um, uh, I've seen, uh, um, it's not really a question, but it's, um, it's a statement from Monica from Colombia about the working on capacity building with minorities. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's uh, I think it, it triggers uh, uh, my attention because what uh, I want to mention in relation to this is that we really want to be this initiative. Uh, I think Temba has already mentioned this to be really demand driven and especially locally implemented. The power of having a global water education network is that 
each of the network members or sub networks, if you will, can benefit from the experience of others. But the intention is to implement the programs, uh, as we say in the in our delivery model, at the most local level possible, because in that case you can really capture uh, the uh, the needs uh, also of minorities, as uh, as Monica is mentioning in her remark. And understanding really what the, the, the what are the needs uh, in terms of water education and training uh, at the most local level possible. So that's something we are uh, heavily trying to uh, to uh, push in in our uh, let's say uh, in the architecture of the network. Um, a subsequent question from. Um, Gopa Kumar, I hope I pronounce your name well, is about the Global Water Academy. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a good question because we have not, I mentioned that, but we have not explained it. The Global Water Academy is uh, managed uh, by UNITAR. Uh, UNITAR, um, uh, it's the, uh, an organi the UN organization for, uh, for uh, training. Um, I'm not sure what the full acronym means, but but it's it's not a water. Uh, we're not talking about water trainings. So uh, UNITAR has a network of training centers, and they provide globally uh, training, especially to uh, 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 senior professionals in in governments, uh, if I remember correctly. And now what they want to do with the Global Water Academy is to increase their um, their uh, their power in delivering uh, water education using their network as, let's say, the, uh, the, the starting point. So they want to increase their offering on uh, on uh, water ed education. And uh, they we are in contact with them and we are going to probably be asked to contribute to their uh, initiative. If you Google Global Water Academy and UNITAR, you will find a uh, lot more information about the, this initiative. Uh, and of course, I ask my colleague to raise their hand, uh, Tem, both Temba and Delfitri, if who, you want to add something to anything I say. Uh, Elfiti, you would like to add something on UNITAR, uh, on the Global Water Academy? Yeah, okay. Yeah, for the uh, Global Water Academy, or GUA, it is also another network and mostly network of universities um, established by UNITAR. Um, and I think the the secretariat based at the UNU uh, in way, uh, also also as a partner of this um, um, uh, what uh, initiative, and this initiative also uh, established in order to in or or in reaction of the out, uh, as a reaction of the outcome for the previous UN water uh, UN UN water conference uh, 2023, where the need for establishment of the global water education. So uh, UNITAR established uh, this. Uh, sort of network called GUA, Global Water Education uh, Academy, sorry, Global Water Academy. And uh, at the same time, or similarly, uh, UNESCO in partnership with uh, ISE, Delft, uh, CapNet, and also CIWI, we established a GUEN, Global Water Education Network. But of course, in order to avoid the overlapping or uh, uh, we try to, to make uh, how to say the coordination among us to work together. So we are already in partnership with them. So Gua, Gwen, and also Bali Coalition, as you mentioned, uh, we mentioned uh, mentioned by Getano just now. We will work together to avoid this overlapping, but instead we will supporting each other, um, and then uh, also together with uh, the the UN Water uh, SDG uh, CDI that, that that I mentioned just now. Uh, so CDI can can be uh, act as uh, an umbrella for this uh, other similar initiative, uh, where uh, in term of implementation of specific training courses will be implemented by uh, GUA or GWEN or Bali Coalition or other uh, entity, because the CDI uh, mostly to conduct or to support a specific member state on the overall capacity development uh, activities or achievement to achieve SDG 6. While for for conducting specific training or activities will be done by the uh, network such as Gwen or Gua. That is the the yeah the partnership that we we've been doing uh, so far. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Fitri, for the uh, additional clarification. I do see that we have also some, uh, a couple of specific questions on potential topics, uh, like, for example, sanitation planning, I see from Justine, and uh, um, from Emran, I see some ideas on uh, co specific courses on ra rainwater harvesting. Uh, and this is addressed specifically to CapNet. So maybe uh, you would like to react to that, Temba, some ideas for new courses. Oh, yes. Um, thank you for, for, for that question. I've just uh, pasted, I think, on the chat, the, the link for the online courses, which are coming from uh, Cap, uh, CapNet uh, on the virtual campus. Um, and I just wanted also to um if you look very closely on maybe to give information on sanitation planning we have also passed courses there which deal with the uh, non sewer sanitation um which could also be uh, worthwhile using the iso standards for uh, non sewer sanitation so th those also can be helpful um uh, for those who are involved in in, in sanitation planning that's all what I wanted to say for now. Thank you. Thank you, Tembe. And of course, uh, yeah, uh, you, you can watch, uh, I think, uh, for all these um, questions that are related to specific topics, I think if you look at uh, both the offering from IHE and CapNet, I'm quite sure that among these two organizations, we'll find a lot of uh, potential content on the sanitation part that Temba just mentioned. We also have our global sanitation uh, graduate school, uh, so that's something that uh, you might want to to explore. Uh, as far as the, the 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 Gwen is concerned on specific topics, um, we don't yet have a list, of course, of topics that we want to uh, to cover because this is going to be the next step. One once we uh, let's say um, engage with the network and we start the activities, especially on the. Uh, on what we call the uh, capacity development products, we will have an understanding of what topics we would like to focus uh, and develop uh, co-curated um, uh, materials there. But all these information, of course, are very helpful as a background. Is Gwen open to individual membership? Um, uh, that uh, I must say it's not really an idea that we have individuals supporting, uh, uh, but of course we uh, it, it depends on a little bit how it develops. Uh, the, uh, the the intention is to um, engage with networks uh, and especially with the organization that deliver water education um, uh, pr products. Uh, but of course, we are not ex excluding anything. So we are probably going to have a team of people. So if there is an interest to um, participate, we should see how much uh, what, what is possible within the uh, within the the governance of the Gwen, and that will be uh, probably more uh, uh, sorted out in the coming months. But uh, you can always mail me uh, if you have uh, some ideas on uh, how to uh, engage as an individual. So um, feel free to contact me for uh, any questions. Um, uh, thanks, Maria Laura, for sharing the information. There is a website that is hosted by CapNet where we also indicate many of the things that I mentioned in my presentation are actually there. So uh, if you want to have more details, uh, I encourage you to visit the, uh, the, uh, the website. Um, we have discussed the, uh, there is a, a, a question from Toka about um, uh, Gwen being a global network for advancing collaboration in the field of water education. That's perfectly fine, uh, what you said. It's a, it's a nice summary, I would say. That's exactly what we want to do. Uh, and uh, um, and of course, with with the specific purpose also of advancing SDG 6. So we don't want to develop educational pro product just to develop them, but to support the capacity of water sector organization and, uh, and uh, in the end contributing to the achievement of SDG 6. So with that addition, I think you captured the, the essence of the GWEN. 
let me see. I'm scrolling the the list of questions. Uh, Global Water Academy. We covered that part. Uh, what possibilities would there be that Gwen could develop a course on environmental impacts in dams for the generation of electrical energy? Um, with the intention of not being the only one that speaks here, maybe Temba, uh, you you have an um, uh, a take on this? Um, yeah. Um, thanks, Gaetano, and thanks for that question. Uh, I think I think the overall to try and answer all these uh, thematic areas which are coming up, um, I, I would like to summarize it as follows. Of course, we, we, we would like to see the um, the interplay of water, you know, in um, you know having IWRM as as an entry point, how it plays out in uh, in in various aspects of the economy, in various aspects of also production, including hydropower and and, and dams, um, and also you know uh, uh, maybe focusing also you know on the on the climate uh, uh, side and, and and water being one of the main um ways to adapt maybe to climate change um so in 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 summary i'll say we some of these uh, thematic areas will, it will be interesting once you know we uh, we start selecting especially projects on the ground and exploring you know what is the interplay of water in all its various uh, aspects and um, and of course you know it, where where dams uh, um, um, are a priority, you know, it should it should it should come out. In certain areas, maybe groundwater will come out to be a you know a, a main focus area. So the, the 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 issue is that we have to contextualize. Everything will be contextualized based on the challenges which are faced uh, on the ground. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tembe, and I hope that covers also another question that I see, uh, maybe a follow-up question uh, from Toka about uh, whether Gwen covers water education issues or cultural social aspect or engineering aspect, because of course, uh, um, um, uh, in relation to that, I just want to reassure our alumni community that we are not tackling uh, the the water issues from just the engineering all the technological aspect but uh, uh, and I, I hope you realize that uh, by looking at the way IHE delivers education we uh, look at water from many many different uh, angles including the social social uh, and governance aspect uh, there is also the diplomacy water diplomacy aspect that we cover so like what uh, what temba was saying we have to contextualize and uh, as soon as we uh, uh, we hear the demand from a specific country or an organization we we try to adapt uh, our work based on uh, on the issue at hand whether it's a technological uh, or social one uh, and work with the appropriate uh, partner and stakeholders there. Um, so that's, um, so thank you, uh, Temba, for that answer. Um, actually, there is a question from Maria Laura about the four selected countries. I think you referring to the uh, CDI countries, the one that uh, Elfitri, yeah, Cuba, yeah. Uh, right. So, um, uh, Elfitri, this is related to the uh, the CDI, the Capacity Development Initiative. We are going to, of course, uh, already in Costa Rica, we are trying to engage with the alumni community uh, there. Uh, uh, the fact that IHE is uh, providing technical contribution to uh, to UNESCO and UNDES on the CDI helps in actually connecting also with our alumni community. So in Costa Rica, we are already in contact with uh, an alumnus, by the way, because they can help identifying uh, who are the right people and the organization to, to have at the table. But of course, we have to realize that this is... Uh, uh, driven by national government, so uh, uh, the, the the we have to see how uh, this um, uh, the, this activity can uh, help in um, uh, in getting support from alumni. I see a hand raised from yourself, Maria Laura. Please take the floor. No, I would like to share that uh, since a few years, IT has 
been working to strengthen the group of alumni in many countries. So in Latin America, most of the countries have strengthened their own group and they have two or three alumni coordinators. In Africa, they are progressing very well and in Asia, they are since uh, four or five years, many groups uh, consolidating and certain ones in the pipeline. So it's a good um, action to be considered because there we have three contact persons and the community is really, really sharing a lot of possibilities. So it could be a good, uh, a good action to get in touch also with them or to inform them. Yes, uh, thank you. No, good point, uh, Maria Laura. Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe uh, because it's CDI, maybe Elfidri, you have some uh, additional um, inputs after Maria Laura's comments on this specific aspect of engaging with alumni community. Um, okay, uh, for for the CDI, because it will be implemented specifically in the specific countries, as you know. So if it is Costa Rica, it means we it will be, be able or potential for alumni in Costa Rica to be part of this workshop also. So if, if there is some alumni in Costa Rica, if you are interested, you can join us in this workshop. And in fact, since you are also working on water, maybe in fact, if you can inform us in advance, a specific support that you can provide. So not only uh, to participate in the workshop, but maybe also can help us in the specific elements. Can be, yeah, I mean, we can discuss in detail on the specific support that might pro provide uh, because I, ISE also will be part of this workshop because ISE, um, what call it, ISE also what uh, our, um, um, uh, what call it, our uh, coordination team also for the, for the CDI and also member of the CDI itself, uh, because we, as I mentioned CDI, we have 39 members currently, and uh, we encourage all members to provide support in, in whether to conduct uh, the specific uh, um, uh, elements, because we will have uh, the structure of the workshop that uh, we, we will, uh, currently we are finalizing the program. Or in term of specific, in fact, I think uh, I don't I don't know if this this is possible a suitable uh, platform or not. We are also looking for the specific consultant, in fact, from Costa Rica to help us a local consultant to help us in the reporting or in the in the yeah I mean to help uh, in the implementing uh, this uh, CDI initiative in Costa Rica. So that is for for the specific support in the specific countries, but for overall, I think uh, from time to time also alumni is uh, uh, if you are interested, you can also provide support in the CDI implementation imp in uh, implementation in in the general or, or or in fact in Gwen activities because Gwen activities will be if we start our program later, it will be not or not on the specific countries can be. In fact, supposedly in the specific topics or areas also. Uh, so if, if alumni is interested, can be part of this uh, activities letter. And what else? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's basically opportunities to work in partnership uh, with us. Thank you. Thank you, Fitri. I think that indeed there are possibilities. Uh, the, the, in, the, in the CDI process, there is always a kickoff workshop, and that's what we are working now uh, in Costa Rica. But of course, it doesn't stop there, because the kickoff is only the start of a, of a, a long-term process of developing the capacities. And uh, uh, once the, the uh, capacity development plan is uh, is um, uh, prepared, uh, then of course we can approach uh, alumni in that specific country in even more targeted way, depending on the, the kind of support that it's needed. But definitely we should um, keep the engagement high. Um, I have another question here about the, uh, there are other questions related to uh, specific topics. Uh, I hope that Temba uh, replied to that already. And uh, there is one uh, from Jennifer about uh, the country-based Gwen. Um, uh, uh, yes, of course, we would like to support um, uh, to support the, uh, the, the, the national uh, water sector organization, if, if that's uh, what you mean, that's ultimately our, uh, our intention. Um, um, 
yeah, so that's uh, that's a bit the uh, the the ultimate goal is is to achieve SDG six at national level, and with our what with our capacity development effort to uh, to address uh, the problems in uh, in specific countries. Uh, once we uh, receive, uh, let's say, um, once we understand and we uh, are able to. Um, understand the, the kind of demands of the specific country. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, so water scarcity is going to become an issue. We, uh, we uh, hear that kind of remarks uh, uh, very often. We had, we had a conversation with Mexico, by the way. Now uh, this, this question is related to Bolivia. Uh, but it's a little bit of everywhere, and uh, it relates to this uh, issue of uh, yeah of increasing global water challenges, and therefore, and we need to uh, to understand where uh, where we can address this issue and how can we develop proper water education programs uh, that tackle the specific issues said uh, uh, in a, in a contextual way. So. Uh, if it's if it's Bolivia, what is the Bolivia context? If it's Mexico, now we are in discussion with them. Uh, what is the the Mexican content? So that's a bit the, one of the core elements of Gwen is to adapt uh, the identification of water education needs depending on the specific context and with the local organizations. Um, yeah, if Jennifer. I may add on this. Yes, uh, please, Elfitri. No, for Bolivia especially, um, maybe it is not Gwen, but uh, it is specific support or activities on the related to this water scarcity or water issues in Bolivia, because uh, it happened that UNESCO, uh, we will organize uh, the specific training course on ecohydrology in Bolivia next month uh, from 12 until 14 August. So for those of you who are interested to be part of the training course, maybe you can register or to check in the website. So it is organized by our UNESCO Montevideo office together with the UNESCO ISP in Bolivia, uh, in Latin America and Caribbean, and also CODIA, I think you know CODIA, and with the support of uh, government of Spain also with IACIT. So it will organize in the IACIT. So I think you can go through or search, find it in website on, on this information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elfidri. Nice to hear. Um, um, I see an interesting question from Jennifer. Maybe I'll, uh, um, I'll ask uh, Temba, uh, if you will, to pick this up. When you say water-related organization as intended partner of Gwen, does it mean organization with legal personality or will you partner to emerging organization, for example, informal? So Temba, you worked hard on the governance aspect. So I think you are the best person to answer that one. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Gaetano. Um, in fact, um, it it could also be formal and informal because um, I think the um, the approach here is to see what would be um, efficient, right? Uh, it could be it could be it could be individuals it could be organizations but there will be a need i think for what we we'll, might call ownership i think there's to be some substantive ownership on the ground which has to be expressed but um there's no hard and fast rule that that organization should be a legal um entity it could be um it could be a network it could be um you know identifying a, a or, or an association identify a certain problem which can be addressed. And I think the, the, the main, one of the biggest attributes also or with Gwen is that flexibility will be the name of the game. So we want to be flexible, want to be agile, and also want to address uh, issues because if we really want to give, if this is gonna be a game changer, um, there's need to look at times outside the box. Um, and um, bearing in mind that this is a push also towards an accelerator towards you know 2030 SDG SDG six uh, agenda, so there is a need to um, maybe at times look beyond the um, the formal, and um, and and maybe look at uh, other ways of doing things. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Temba. Um, I also see uh, immediately after that question a remark about a regional network based in Costa Rica, member of CapNet, which uh, gives me the opportunity to uh, explain that, of course, um, um, we have already in mind, although we have not yet engaged with the uh, with the broader community of networks yet uh, but we have already sort of inventorized who are the, the ones that are immediately uh, uh, and logical to be engaged and of course capnet is part of our uh, of this alliance so uh, every organization that belongs both to the network of uh, IHE Delft or network uh, UNESCO the category 2 centers for example we want to bring on, on board uh, and all the networks belonging to CapNet uh, network uh, being a network of networks. Uh, they are uh, logical, uh, let's say, members of the GWEN for the, for the future. Uh, in view of time, uh, the, how I'm, I'm looking at Maria Laura now, do, do we have to wrap up? Maria Laura, do we have uh, time for a couple more questions? Uh, maybe? maybe if uh, we have uh, one question and uh, after we can uh, wrap up. Right. Okay. So let me see. Um, and um, I'm sorry if I'm. Uh, 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 yeah. So there is an interest in the, uh, any anyone interested in uh, in becoming um, part of of Gwen or uh, or wanted to contribute to Gwen in whatever way, um, like for example, reaching out to. Uh, to um, partners or potential donors also, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, you can find me quite easily on the, both on the information about this, this seminar, but also on the IHE website. So please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, Maria Laura reminds me that the video in this seminar will be available. Uh, and uh, maybe the very last question, something related to monitoring and evaluation uh, for reporting the progress of different areas of SDG 6. Um, yeah, um, I know that um, maybe Temba also here would, uh, Temba, is that something that you can uh, can pick up? Yes, I would like to understand maybe a little bit better the question, but uh... Um, I think uh, uh, Justin is it who, who has raised the question. Yeah. This is um, there is a formal process of uh, of of, me of measuring progress, which is uh, um, managed by a number of the UN uh, agencies. And um, on on SDG six five one, for example, uh, UNEP and the uh, UNEP DHI uh, take the lead, working together also with the Global Water Partnership and CapNet. So there is uh, a formal process of, of measuring progress. So I assume the question is related to that. Uh, um, but if it's more on the training aspects, um, uh, I, I, I would say that, you know, the, so far the, the, there is nothing which exists. And this is something which, you know, with IHE uh, uh, some time back we've been trying to establish. You know how how does you know water education and training how do we measure progress? And uh, some of you uh, might be aware that uh, at the beginning with SDG six A, uh, you know the idea was to measure progress on such, but it turned out to be measuring you know you know ODA you know the flow of uh, funds from developed to developing countries, rather than you know the um the implement means of implementation or the capacity to implement. So it, it turned out to be uh, meaning something else. So there's been discussions in the past. Maybe this is one assignment which maybe Gwen can take up and say, look, we don't have a framework of measuring uh, progress. And in the Gwen proposal, this is these are some of the aspects where we want to emphasize on based on the theory of change, which we've uh, elaborated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Temba. Uh, yeah, indeed, the um, especially on the on the part related to uh, SDG six uh, A, uh, the the target related to capacity building. Um, it's uh, there is um, 
uh, a lot of discussion going on and uh, we could have, I think, a webinar only for that probably uh, and discussing also the work that has been uh, done in the past years by UNESCO on, on a water education indicator. Uh, and that's also something that we discussed within Gwen. And of course, use, needless to say that we also have a MEL monitoring and evaluation and learning mechanism foreseen for the Gwen itself. So that, that's what I wanted to add to what Temba has mentioned. So if there is no other, uh, yeah, I think the time is up. Uh, I would like at this point to give the floor back to Maria Laura, but mm -hmm. not before thanking you a lot for, uh, for listening to the Gwen story, be in contact if you're interested to pursue this, to, to get to know more and if you would like to uh, be involved and if you have any uh, recommendation or suggestion of course we are uh, willing to hear from you uh, so again thank you and thank you to my colleagues Temba and Elfitri for <laughs> joining me in this webinar uh, heading now uh, to the end of the webinar I will uh, give the floor back to Maria Laura and thanks Maria Laura for this well thank you very much Gaetano and Elfitri and Temba for this uh, great uh, seminar that I think it was really interesting for our alumni. This will be recorded and we will share it in social media. People will receive it and it will be also in YouTube. So I think that uh, many persons will get to know about the initiative and will contact you for further actions. I think it will be really very much appreciated by all alumni. I would like to, I don't know if uh, you, Temba, would like to say something to the audience before I say the last words. Um, nothing much, but to say, you know, um, uh, again, to my opening words, uh, uh, we see the IHE alumni playing a, a big part in Gwen, and also, you know, the different networks which are represented here. Uh, it could be CAPNET or networks of IHE or networks uh, coming from, out of UNESCO or CIWI. So it's a it's a it's a it's a huge movement. That's why we we thought of this global network, um, and it requires I think um, all hands on deck. And uh, that's my last word. Uh, thank you, Maria Laura. You're welcome, Elfitri. Would you like to say your last words? For me, maybe I would. I would just say uh, thank you to for inviting me and also to get opportunity to meet all the alumni of uh, ISE Delft. And I hope in the future we will be able to collaborate further in various activities with UNESCO. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much to all attendees, to all the speakers, and for sure we will do something extra in UNESCO. And for your curiosity, the invitation of the event in Uruguay had been shared in all the WhatsApp groups of Latin America yesterday by alumni. So they are really informed and it's very, very nice. I would like to mention that we are going to have two upcoming seminars also connected with topics that have been very present in the World Water Forum. One is connected with the youth movement and youth network and what they have learned and what they would like to achieve after the World Water Forum. And another one more connected with an action of IHE Delft that we have had a mangrove um, tree plantation that was very successful and we would like to dedicate a seminar on that topic about uh, mangrove trees and the coastal um, well, it's gone, the coastal protection. So after that, uh, I would like to say thank you to all and hope to see you in the coming seminars and that you send to Gaetano or I to, to share it with the other members, all the questions or initiatives or ideas that you have about when. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.